Hello and welcome to another episode of Small Brook Fishing. This will actually be a, a short session indeed. I've just been on a journey, dropped someone off somewhere, going to pick them up later. In the meantime, well, I've got my fishing tackle cast out and immediately I've got, must be a dozen or so, small sticklebacks onto the bait I just snatched but didn't actually connect with one you do have to be careful because you don't want them to take the hook if they do they tend to be larger fish and I do have a very very fine disgorger so I'm able to get that sorted and I, oh, I had one on almost then. It, it came off just as I lifted it from the water. That's fine now, they don't get spooked. It takes a, a lot to spook these fish. They're not, <laughs> another one came off just as I lifted it from the water and it dropped back down and for a moment or two wondered what was happening. Then it's gone back down and it's, on the bait again. Whatever you're fishing for, it's always nice to catch the first one. And that's a three spine stickleback, the species that I'm targeting today. That's quite a small fish there, probably the smallest that you would get that would take the hook. And as you see there, it's got rid of it itself. Another one there. And again, it taken the hook. What I have done is cut the maggot in half. It makes it much easier to connect with a fish because a whole maggot for fish of this size, at least, it's a, a big mouthful that can certainly take a, a maggot reduced though. And then of course you've got pinkies and squats if you wanted to go down that route. I lost count, I would say about 20 so far, all small ones, and then I just banked this specimen, the biggest so far of the session. I have been banging the watercraft drum a lot recently, especially in these sessions, very shallow, very clear brooks. And what you notice is that on this particular spot that I'm on, there's a, if you like, a trench, although you're only talking inches, on the near bank underneath where I am. And then it, it shelves up or it slopes up to a, a very, very shallow uh, shelf along the far bank. You're only talking a, a metre wide, well, yeah just about a meter wide looking down. So the fish are concentrated in the trench. And that's why watercraft is important because if I put a bait in the shallows, as it were, nothing. Even if I drop my bait on the slope halfway down, I'm getting just very, very small fish. They're too small to even take the bait. But once I drop it into the channel, the relatively deep water, that's where I'm getting the action. So just a few inches determines whether I get nothing, tiny fish that I can't hook anyway, or the ones that I've been catching. And that's why you can never underestimate the value of watercraft. Growing up, it was particularly important. Now I'm not knocking commercials at all, so don't 
take that the wrong way. I think they're fantastic and they serve a, a great purpose. But in many ways, you go and you know what to expect. It's been dug and you know exactly the depths and you know what's in front of you. In fact, it's been dug to make all the pegs fairly even. So there's a, a consistency in the pool. But once you start to come to waters like this, they're natural, they're wild, there isn't a, consist a consistency. And that's where watercraft is important. In fact, good watercraft skills will still give you the edge on a commercial. So don't think that they're easy. I'm not saying that at all. I'm sure you understand as an angler the point that I'm trying to make. Anyway, I've just took a short break. Give the fish a rest. I've lost count. Definitely now I've had some nice fish as well, all from the trench. And that's where I'm going to drop a bait again. Heading back to the car now, that was very pleasurable indeed. I certainly enjoyed my short visit to that particular brook. There's someone that I mentioned that I dropped off and I'm going to pick up. It's my wife since lockdown kicked in way back in March. She's been helping some elderly ladies out with the shopping and doing a few jobs for them as the restrictions have been lifted. And that's where she is right now. And I'm going to pick her up and then continue with the rest of the day. How about yourself? Tight lines and I'll see you soon.